that right? Oh, and he's finished it off! Gone deserve a result. Um, don't think they deserve the 6-0 scoreline that they got, but next game, tonight, we got a, they got a chance to respond. They got a chance to make things right, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, disappointing few weeks for Tobacco Row, but I think tonight's theme and the theme for the next couple of games is responding. If this team chooses to keep losing and choosing not to show up, it's going to be a long season, but if they can respond, put some good things together, then they can turn the season around because we're only about halfway through it. Voices heard, heard was of Jacob Turner. Alongside him is me, Jamie Patel, bringing you all the action tonight between these two sides. And just as you said, Tobacco Road seeking redemption, seeking sort of a revenge here. Some unfair calls maybe from the referee. Uh, Eli Garner was sent off in that match and is serving a suspension. And Cedric Burke, looking to aid him, was also sent off controversially by the lead official. But it all eyes are on Brian Wellman on the touchline tonight as he's going to be leading the line in charge of Tobacco Road FC and setting the same message that Cedric Burke has been installed in this team. Be dedicated. Yeah, be dedicated. I think that's what it's really all about. It's, it's tough times. It's four losses on the bounce with Tobacco Road. Three of those, um, three of those, the last three of them were on the road. So a, a team that hasn't won in a weight game this season, a team that uh, the first two games, oh, excuse me, they have won a weight game this season. The first one in Greensburg is the Carolina Dynamo, which is a really good result. Start off really well this season. And, Jamie, ever since that Charlotte Eagles lost the last game we called when there was a controversial decision when the ball looked like it clearly crossed the, the sideline and was out of bounds, was not given, and, and Charlotte Eagles going to score and went in the last minute of the game, really. And ever since then, Tobacco Road was at a crossroads. The, the players, are you going to respond to this negatively? Or are you going to respond and keep moving forward? And unfortunately for this club, they've gone the opposite direction. In the last few games, 13 goals against, three goals for. And for this team on paper that is so talented, has so much talent on this field every night, that's just unacceptable. So, like I mentioned earlier, Jamie, the theme of this team tonight is responding. They can beat this Lions Bridge team easily. It, it, it's in them. It, it's, it's, it's if they want it or not, and I think that's what they've been struggling with recently. But, you know, another beautiful night for soccer, and I think it's going to be a really good matchup because, like I said, Tobacco Road is a good team, but they haven't been showing it recently. And with that four-match um, four unbeaten run, Tobacco Road, you know, they need the three points if they want to stay in this playoff fight. Yeah, they do, and we're about halfway, getting close to about halfway through the season right now. T Tobacco Road sitting 2-4, and four, start off the season 2-0. Oh. Uh, the Charlotte Eagles lost, and they go on the road and lose consecutively. Uh, Myrtle Beach and then NCFC, a team that they beat really easy, pretty easily here earlier in the season. They go and carry and lose to them, and then they go on the road and just get thrashed by Lionsbridge in a really uncharacteristic match for the team. A lot of, Like I said, a lot of controversial decisions and, and a really just a weird game, but nonetheless... It's just simply not been good enough, and it's been a little bit unexpected, Jamie. We had a really high expectations for this team going into the season. After those first two games, uh, everybody was ranting and raver, raving about them. The PDL, Soccer and Sweet Tea, everybody that covers this type of soccer, the PDL South Atlanta Division, was really ranting and raving about them. And ever since then, we've just seen a dip in form, and lucky for them, it's, it's not too late in the season to turn it around. But if they don't turn it around tonight, Jamie, and they don't get some, pick up some kind of points tonight, preferably three points, and unfortunately, it's this team's in trouble because time's running out for them to make the to make a really a playoff push because they're sitting second to last in the, in, in the South Atlantic Division right now. We're sitting halfway in the middle of the season, match day seven here at Durham County Memorial Stadium, and playing away from home, it's always difficult when you lose a tight match as they did against the Charlotte Eagles at home and then have to go on the road for three games, mm -hmm. and that may have played a part in those road worries. I think it did. I think that Charlotte Eagles loss was. Had a, had, an, a, had, had a really potential to be a, a very deflating game in terms of the rest of the season. And like, like I mentioned earlier, they had, a, they had a decision where they were either going to let this affect their away form and let this really bring them down, or they were going to move on from it and let them 
let, let it motivate them going to the rest of the season. And unfortunately, they just haven't responded in the correct way. Like I mentioned, 13 goals against and three goals for is just not good enough for a team that is defensively as good as Tobacco Road can be and his attack going forward is as good as this team can be. So, yeah, it's been it's been really disappointing past couple of weeks. Jamie, I know you've been on a few of those away trips, so you can speak a little bit more of what you've seen. But one thing I will say, we were in the locker room earlier, and this team, the chemistry that this team has is still really good. They're, they're still together. They're still a tight-knit group. The locker room hasn't turned. And, uh, yeah, Brian Wellman covering for Cedric Berkey was controversially suspended against Lions Bridge. And I think he's going to do a really good job. He's more than capable of leading this team. They know what they need to do. And I would expect a really good matchup tonight. I, I would put, you know, I would just be completely shocked if this was a shutout for Tobacco Road. I think they're going to score some goals tonight. And I think they're going to defend a lot better, too. And obviously, they can't really defend it any worse than they did against Lions Bridge last time. So it's going to be a good matchup. I'm excited for it. And I'm excited to see how this team responds because that's just got to be the theme for the rest of the season. And who are some players you're looking to step up in the absence of Eli Garner? He plays quite a vital role up top for Tobacco Road in terms of not only scoring goals, but creating chances and chasing down every loose ball. Who's the player that you think is going to take over that position? I think it's got to be Toph Wada. A guy early in the season that was just so good, so electric, was doing all the right things. I think he's a guy that's really got to try to make a difference and really make a difference tonight because he's more than capable of doing that. Coming up after this short break, we'll have lineups for you and kickoff all awaiting you shortly on the other side of this short break. Football Club and your Tobacco Road Football Club. Now for tonight's starting lineup, starting first with the visiting Lions Bridge FC. Starting in goal, number one, Joe Rice. Defense, number 22, Josh Spencer. Defense, number five, Tom Dubit. Defense, number 12, Marshall McCarthy. Defense, number 17, Austin Graham. Midfielder, number eight, Ivan Militar. Midfielder, number 24, Fortier Munts. Midfielder, number six, Simon Fitch. Forward, number two, Max Poker. Forward, number seven, Travis Cook. And forward, number four, Jalen Brown. And now, the starting lineup for your tobacco roll. Vicente Gallardo. Midfielder number six, Champe Mendoza. Midfielder number eight, Javier Alcantara. 
Correa, midfielder, number two, Mauricio Pineda, forward, number 14, Ben Fisher, forward, number nine, Mustafa Rada, and forward, number 10, Joaquim Del Rosario. With your starting lineups for you here as Lions Bridge FC have travelled to Durham County Memorial Stadium to take on Tobacco Road FC. Jacob Turner will go through the away side for you first. Yeah, Lions Bridge starting off in a 4-3-3 tonight in goal. Joe Rice, four defenders, Josh Spencer, Tom Divot, Marshall McCartney, and Austin Graham. Final out the back line for Lions Bridge tonight. In midfield, Ivan Militar, Fortier Munts, and Simon Fitch complete the three midfield trio tonight for Lions Bridge and leading the line. Max Polker, Travis Cook, and Jalen Brown. Strong starting lineup for, for Queensbridge tonight. And uh, Jamie, when you go through the Tobacco Road lineup for us. Yeah, starting a goal. Familiar face, Ryan Creasons returns between the sticks after having missed out on the amateur tournament through availability. That saw Zach Scott take that goalkeeper position from him. Kellen Foster also returns in the back line. He's joined by Dylan Chain, Brad Ruhock, and Vincente Gallardo, who hasn't missed an entire match this season for Tobacco Road. He's been immense at the back, has been Gallardo. German Mendoza, otherwise known as Champe, returns to the midfield. Javier Alcadia and Maurizio Pineda also in the lineup for Tobacco Road. And up front, Ben Fisher will take on Eli Garner's role tonight. 
Mustafa Wada and Joaquin Del Rosario are on either side of him on the wings. On the bench, Zach Scott will be the goalkeeper that will back up Ryan Creeton should anything happen to him tonight. Marshall Hodge, Fernando Castellanos, Oscar Moreno, Tom Tommaso De Augustino, Huntley Munn and Michael Bamber complete the bench for Tobacco Road as we are underway here in Durham, North Carolina. As it's Lions Bridge who have the initial possession as Tobacco Road are challenging through Mendoza who's gone and hit his own player through Wada. Not quite sure he, what he was trying to accomplish there. And Los Toros have won it back. Here's Dylan Chain who's was unlucky to not start against Lionsbridge in the away matchup just a few weeks ago as he's back in the starting lineup tonight. And for Dylan Chain it's a matter of consistency. Going forward he is a threat but defensively there are questions. Yeah, this season he, he's a good defender. That's what he grew up playing in high school and, and throughout his career at, over at Castle, now NCFC. And, and he, he's, he's naturally a defender, so it's been a little bit surprising this season to see him not play as well defensively, but it's good to have a forward option. If he can just get that defending cleared up, he's going to be a really, really solid player on this left wing. Wada has a chance early on, and he's done it! Taf Wada has broken his goal-storing drought, and that was a clinical finish. And that is just the start that Tobacco Road wanted. Jamie, we talked about it all pregame. The theme for tonight's game is how is Tobacco Road going to respond after four consecutive losses? That's the best start they could have asked for. A 6-0 thrashing just a week ago to this same team. They come out and they take the lead to a guy we talked about that needed to step up in the absence of Eli Gardner. Top Wada, a man that can put the ball in the back of the net when he wants to but hasn't done it this season. What a start that is for Tobacco Road. Couldn't have asked for anything better. 1-0 scoreline. And where's this Tobacco Road team been in the past four games? This is, this is what, exactly what they've been missing. The front foot, going out there, enjoying soccer, expressing themselves, attacking. And that's what happens when they do it. So a beautiful start for Tobacco Road. And let's just hope they can keep it up and, and stretch this lead out. Well, Tobacco Road coming out of the blocks hot early on here. As <laughs> Cretans nearly got caught there. An instant response nearly for Lions Bridge. As Devitt clears the danger only as far as Chain. As he was looking for Del Rosario, Pineda wins it back. And back all the way to Ryan Cretans. What a start for Tobacco Road. Linesbridge were just caught sleeping there at the back. No one was marking Wada, and he did all the rest. Yeah, it's such a surprising start, really, if, Jamie, if we're being honest with ourselves. Like, Tobacco Road, a team that's only scored three goals in the past four matches. They come out and score you know, in the first minute. That's exactly what they needed. That's the exact response they needed. But the thing I'm looking for is, all right, you scored early, that's fine. But can you keep that level of consistency up? And Ben Fisher is in behind here. Was he brought down? The referee says no. Free kick given the other way as he had fouled the defender. And that's another let off for Lionsbridge. Yeah, Tobacco Road almost fine. Not saying he, Fisher would have finished it, but he would have been in a great position to do so. And with the, with the pace that Fisher has as well, I'm surprised he didn't get to that ball. Certainly a foul, a little bit of a, a tackle from behind there trying to, trying to get that ball. But nonetheless... Really good start from Tobacco Road, but we've seen this in the earlier this season, Jay. We've seen this Tobacco Road team start off well, and, and, and their level of play goes down a little bit. So let's hope they can keep it up because they're more than capable of playing like this for 90 minutes. Foster's cleared it away. Out of play for a throw in for Linesbridge. Linesbridge showing early on that they haven't quite got their bearings going so far. Still need to settle in. Prevent going down 2-0 early on with not even five minutes gone. Chain finds Del Rosario, who's made his way back into the squad following some impressive performances at the weekend in the amateur tournament at WRAL Soccer Complex as Champion Mendoza has been fouled. And Pineda yeah, takes the free kick quickly. It's a guy I want to see on the ball a lot tonight, Champion Mendoza. It seems like when he plays, he makes a difference. And he, when he's on the ball, he, makes, he just makes things happen. So if, between him and Pineda, that's, that's a midfield duo right there that you really look at and should be happy to see because they can really just do things that some midfielders can on this team. Shane was caught in possession now. It's a heavy challenge from Al Carilla. Looked like he had won the ball initially and then went through the player. Not quite sure if I would warrant a yellow card for that challenge. Just a heavy one early on. The referee's going straight to his book and we might see a reflection of that throughout the match. 
Yeah, Jamie, it's one of those things when a guy goes flying in like like he did uh, aggressively going in through the man. I'm, I'm sure he, he more than likely got ball first from what I saw. It, it, it looks more aggressive than it maybe it necessarily is. So a little disappointed to see the referee go in the book so quick, but I can see why he did it. But nonetheless, you like to see guys flying in, making things happen, playing with a little bit of that aggression, something that Tobacco Rose really been missing over the past couple weeks. And, you know, it's, it's just good to see guys flying in like that. But you got to be careful. You, you, you can't lose your head. And you, you definitely don't, you know, especially your midfielder, you, you don't want to see your guy in a yellow, with a yellow card so early in a match. But flicked on towards Polka. And he had fouled his defender. Looked like it might have been Pineda. And how important do you think that opening goal for Tafwada is it for his confidence? He hasn't been playing well in the past few matches. And to get a goal with no out-and-out -out striker playing in a right-wing position, it's got to do his confidence a world of good. Yeah, the, the, you know, it's, cl it's cliche, but really the only thing that can increase a, a forward's confidence is scoring goals, especially a guy as good as, as Tafwada is. He's so talented. When he gets on the ball, he, he looks to make things happen, and he usually does. But like you mentioned, Jamie, over the past few games, really none of this team has played too well. And, you know, for him to start off like that, not only does it give him a boost going forward for the rest of the game, hopefully, and hopefully for the rest of the season, but he gives his whole team behind him a boost as well. So great start for them, and hopefully he can keep it up because, like we mentioned pregame, Jamie, Topwater is a guy that, with Eli Gardner in his, in his absence, has to step up, and, and he did it. Looks like Lions Bridge will be taking a long throw in through Marshall McCartney. You're always dangerous to have a guy that can... Just throw that ball as far as he wants to. This is dangerous right here. It was towards Debit. And it's collected by Wada. And there's a counter on for Tobacco Road if they can get their numbers right. Chain. Wada. Fouled. Cynical challenge from Simon Fitch. And he's lucky not to go in the book for that one. Yeah, certainly not as heavy as a challenge as we saw from Al Korea just, just moments earlier. But definitely a, a late one. Good to see the referee not go in his book, though. I don't like to see the referee just pull out cards every time there's a tackle flies, and it just totally ruins the game and the, and the pace of the, and flow of the game. So can't really blame him for not going in his book there. I don't think it was needed. Cleared away by Gallardo. Mendoza did brilliantly to bring that down, and he goes down in the heap. Might have caught a hand to the face there. Mendoza is still down. A little bit surprised to see the referee not blow the whistle there, but didn't see too much in the challenge. Looks like he may have got a forearm. Looked like towards the face, but he doesn't seem to be grabbing his face. It's more like he's grabbing his stomach or something like that. So I'm not too sure what what happened to Champe, but nonetheless, he's not moving much. It doesn't seem to be. It seems to be in a whole bunch of discomfort right now. Might just take himself a second to get up, but. Looked like he got caught in the face, maybe by the forearm, or not quite sure who it was, but he's made amends. Looks like he's holding his hand, the wrist area. So it looks like he. Not sure what happened there. It didn't really seem like his wrist was touched or put in an awkward situation. So yeah, no, seems to be fine though. Chapa is a tough player, a guy that really gets after it on the field. So good to see him back on his feet. And Pineda retrieves, finds Alcaria. He needs to be just a bit more careful tonight, having got that early yellow card. Ruhak, he has experience for North Carolina FC's first team when he signed on just a few years ago. Yeah, it's good to see Ruhak in the starting lineup. I think he's a really solid defender, a guy that has that professional experience, has played it. Played at that higher level, so good to see him in the right. I think he's more than capable of playing that right back position. McCartney. Back to him again. Lionsbridge is starting to get a foot in this game, starting to get a little more possession. Tobacco Road forced to just press now and chase the ball, which can get frustrating after a while, but good job to win it back there by, by Fisher. 
And Pineda did well to win the ball there. Not quite sure if that's a foul. Yeah, Jamie, I didn't see too much in that. Certainly a loud shout from the Lionsbridge player, but... And Muntz has got up after what seemed like not a very hard challenge. The referee easily booking <laughs> the Tobacco Road midfielders. Not quite sure on the other side, but at the moment, Tobacco Road needs to be careful in going into these challenges. Jamie, my thing is, if you go down screaming as loud as Muntz did and you get up 20 seconds later not even favoring your leg, I, I, I just don't really, I can't put too much backing on that being a legitimate foul. So that's the only thing I... When I'm watching soccer and I'm mean, being outside and can hear what's going on, when a guy screams as loud as he does and he gets up 20 seconds later, and again the the, oppo the 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 guy who made the foul is in the book for that, uh, it just makes me question referees' and decisions sometimes. But Munt seems to be fine now, but he certainly let out a loud shout there and seems to be okay, which is good. You don't want to see any player go down, but man, it, from the looks of it, it sounded bad. Still favoring that right leg a little bit though, so. Definitely was a good challenge by him, but just don't think it deserved the yellow card as fast as it was given. Oh, that's another mid central midfield player for Tobacco Road that needs to be careful going into challenges. And Pineda, quite an aggressive player on the ball. Yeah. Really needs to watch out when he's going in for 50, 50 challenges. Yeah, it's just disappointing when your two holding midfielders, Alcaria and Pineda, are both in the book within you know the first 11 minutes of the game. So definitely two guys that need to be careful and Gonna have to play a little bit type of a different style of game. Maybe can't be as aggressive as they want to be, but they're smart players. I think they'll be fine, and just hope they don't. With how this referee's been handing out cards, hopefully, uh, don't get another uh, decision go against them. But yeah, disappointing to see two yellow cards given out so fast. But referee certainly making his his mark on this game so far. And it's another long throw in that Cretans does very well to claim. You know, what a great throw. Seems like Lions Bridge really has, you know, any throw in 20, 30 yards out is basically like a corner for them. So that's definitely a, a dangerous asset to have on, on, on the field for, for Lions Bridge. Cretans clearance is just too long for Del Rosario. As Fisher was trying to find him with the second ball. And that's an interesting back pass from Gallardo. And Jalon Brown has been dubbed by Cretans. A clever touch from the goalkeeper. Yeah, great little chip there by Cretans. Found himself in a in an awkward position, but great first touch there by Cretans. Sets himself up and just dinks it past the Lions Bridge forward. And and definitely was needed because that could, that could definitely have been a dangerous situation there. Lions Bridge just Starting at a, a foothold in this match, and just as I say that, they throw away possession. Ruhark, Pineda, Foster. Gallardo's trying to find Chain with that ball. She couldn't quite hook it towards the left. Yeah, Gallardo just waited a little bit too long for me. Chain had made a good run down there and just wasn't quick enough to play the ball. Waited a little bit too long and ends up, for lack of a better word, just shanking that through ball. So disappointing there, but you can see that those channels are opening up going forward, so something Tobacco Road needs to look to exploit. Chain with an immense throw in, headed away by Devitt. Wada. Challenged well by Militar. Tobacco Road have it back. Pineda. Always looking to launch another attack. Is Maurizio Pineda quite an attacking centre midfielder but can also do a job defensively. Does very well. Starts quite a few games for North Carolina just over in Chapel Hill. What have you made of him so far this season? He has been a bit inconsistent but when he's shown his bits of quality they've been crucial. Well, he started off the season so well. The first three games, even against that in that loss against the Charlotte Eagles, he played. He was probably for Tobacco Road, my man of the match, had an important goal in that game as well that tied the match up. But yeah, it dropped off a little bit in form. But I mean, the whole unfortunately for this Tobacco Road team, the whole squad has really just dropped off after that three-game away streak. But 
tonight. They're showing a, a definitely a resiliency that we've been missing over the past few weeks. And Pineda, I think so far, has been integral to that tonight. He's, he's really done some good things. He's dictated the play in the midfield for Tobacco Road and needs to keep it up because we know how good of a player he is and a, a guy that was third team All-ACC. He has also been in the U.S. national team camp at the U18 to U20 level. So a really, really solid midfielder. But the thing is, when he's not playing well, this team doesn't play well. So a lot of pressure on him to, to make things happen. Gallardo will look to bring it forward. Shane just trying to nutmeg his defender there. Thrown in towards his UNCW teammate Fisher, who looked like he might have been fouled there. The defender, Marshall McCartney, won none of the ball. And Fisher ended up in a heap there. Not unlucky to not get a free kick off the referee for that. Yeah, just been a little bit too inconsistent tonight from the referee so far. He's called some fouls that maybe weren't fouls, and he's let some go that maybe should have been fouls. So, you know, it's tough being a referee. It's not easy to be down on that field in the flow of the game. But, I mean, that's your job, and that's what you're here to do. So, yeah, it's a little bit too inconsistent for me so far. But, you know, no, nothing too controversial tonight, and hopefully we don't have a decision like that um, going forward. It's launched towards Polka, and then Ruhok was caught on the head there. Pineda, Wada, that's a good turn from him and great play. Medosa has been released. Del Rosario, still Wada. His boy is sure a wonder to watch at times. And that's a tough challenge from Ruhok and the referee is given a foul there. And we've seen worse challenges given than that. Yeah, Jamie, we have tonight, and trying to be as unbiased as possible. It's, you know, I just I want to see consistent refereeing. I don't I don't care what level you're playing at. I don't care if it's U18 on the play, U8 on the playground, or you know, USPDL. I want to see consistent refereeing, and it's just not been like that tonight. But like I said, still here in the match, nothing too crazy so far. I haven't seen any, you know, even the both the yellow cards we had for Tobacco Road were heavy challenges, but were a little bit questionable as well. So. Just hope this referee can, you know, just keep a foothold on this game because sometimes the more inconsistent you get, the more you lose the players. And you lose the players, you lose the fans, you lose the fans, you lose the, the manager. So it just kind of is a domino effect after that. But still in the match, and just glad we haven't seen anybody sent off in all honesty, Jamie, because we've had some controversial ones. Brightleaf retiring out in full force tonight. Great to see them. Definitely missed them over the – Really, over the past month or so, it's been a while since we've we've been out here, Jamie. Mendoza couldn't quite connect with that throw in from Shane. Yeah, Jamie, just to speak on top water, you'd mentioned him after that last little bit of possession for Tobacco. He, he just seems like he has that ball glued to his foot at times. He can turn on a dime and. And really just make things happen out of nothing. So it's really been exciting. that He's been probably the best player on the pitch tonight so far. Great ball. Fisher. Pineda, he's got a man over. It's Tafwada. Oh, and he just couldn't quite find his feet there. Cleared away in the end by Lions Bridge. Yeah, it was good defending by Austin Graham over there. Able to get that ball away. You know, you, you, you kind of favor Tafwada when he squares up his man like that 1v1, but... Seems like he was caught in two minds whether he, if he should shoot or, or cut back and try to make something happen. Decided to cut back and wrong decision in the end. Gardo did well there against Jalon Brown who scored the opening goal as Tobacco Road were defeated on the road against Lions Bridge. Chain, ball in towards Wada. It's flicked back across for Ruhark. Will he have a go? He elects to cross. It's still with Dylan Chain. Back across. Cleared away crucially by Lionsbridge. Mendoza. Tobacco Road just having a strike at every ball here. As Mendoza with a tame effort. That's more positive from the home side. Creating chances. Just really testing this goalkeeper in Joe Rice. Who they weren't able to test at all. Away in Newport News. Yeah, Tobacco Road's just done a great job tonight of winning the 50-50 balls, getting to them first. That's really why they're up in this game and why they find themselves on the front foot so much. They, every time there's a 50-50 challenge, 
you know, nine times out of ten tonight, Tobacco Road has won it. And that's what it takes to win, especially when you've been on a little bit of a losing streak. And would love to have been in the locker room, Jamie, when during the pregame speech. You know, it definitely seems like a motivated team, at least a more of a motivated team than, than over the past couple of weeks. We've just seen two goalkeepers clear both sets of players in quick succession. Not quite, not the kind of football you want to be watching here on a hot Wednesday night. Yeah, that, that little, could turn, this game could turn into a little bit of a snoozer if we keep seeing that happen consistently. But, you know, as we can tell, both both goalies definitely got some big legs on them. But yeah, you don't see that too, too, too often in, in soccer. But been a good match so far. Pineda with a searching ball. Just too much on it for Del Rosario to reach. Yeah, Del Rosario, not the uh, tallest player. Certainly not nearly as tall as Pineda there, maybe. Just thought he had a little more hops than he did, but I don't think he was getting to that regardless if he was 6 foot or 6'10". It's a little bit too much on that ball for anybody. Graham. Here's Jalon Brown. And Alcaria. Thunders a clearance off of Brown and out for a goal kick. Ryan Cretans hasn't had much to do tonight. But when he's been called upon this season, more often than not, he's been there for Tobacco Road. Yeah, and you know, looking at the highlights from the last game against Lions Bridge, I talked to Cretans before the game and definitely admitted that he had a couple, a couple goals that he allowed in that game that he usually saves. Got beat on the near post one time. Had a couple of good saves in that game as well, but and Mendoza's coming forward and couldn't quite connect. Thought for certain that touched up a Lonsbury defender, but obviously did not. Just a very poor shot from Champion Mendoza. Pretty uncharacteristic for him. Joaquin Del Rosario looking for Wada. Looked like his shirt might have been held there. Fisher. Ben Fisher. Stings the palms of Joel Rice. But it's an easy save in the end. Straight down the middle. Great hustle by Fisher there. Just winning the 50-50 ball again. Following up top. Wada gets that ball on his right foot. Cuts it back to his left one. Tries to have a shot on goal. This is Tobacco Road team tonight. Certainly not hesitating. When they get a chance to shoot, they're shooting him. Sometimes that can be good, sometimes that can be bad, but after just such a poor performance last time against Lions Bridge, really not testing the goalkeeper out at all in Joe Rice, it's good to see this team, you know, taking some chances on him and just testing him, keeping him honest early Del on. Del Rosario game. was caught there. Referee waves play on. Mendoza coming inside. And he didn't get the connection yet again. Mendoza's been looking wonderful going forward, but just that final touch has been lacking. He got to reward Ben Fisher there. He makes a great run, a very unselfish run to, to open up some space for Chompe Mendoza. And Chompe decides to shoot from about 30 yards out. Not the right decision. You got to reward Fisher there. He's doing the dirty work for you. Give him the ball. But, yeah, Mendoza not hesitating to shoot tonight. It's probably his third or fourth shot so far. But, unfortunately for him, just really hasn't been able to test Joe Rice at all tonight. Just some, some weak shots so far. You like to see his confidence going forward, thinking that he can score from just about anywhere. And he just about proved that against North Carolina FC under-23s in their second match up here with a wonderful free kick. But ever since then, we haven't seen too much of Mendoza. Yeah, he's, he's been in and out of the squad a little bit. I know he was out of the squad in that disappointing result against the Charlotte Eagles. And then I think he found his way back in the squad at Myrtle Beach and had a decent game there, but just wasn't really a good showing from the whole team in that match down in, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. But, yeah, Chompe is a guy that when he's on, he's on, and when he's off, he's off. So they need him playing well because it really this, this team goes through the midfield much like any team, any soccer team anywhere. If your midfield doesn't get things done, then you're going to find it hard to do anything going forward and defending. So definitely need Chompe to keep leading that attack going forward because he's really the link between the defense and, and the forwards. And he's standing over this free kick here just for about 33 yards. The American football gridiron helping us out here with yardage. Yeah, maybe not the most uh, picturesque thing I have, uh, but definitely helps out with yardage. 
and it's an easy gathering for Rice. Devitt under immediate pressure from Fisher, who is, do is doing uh, what the game plan has been told to him. Press up top and force a mistake. And Jimmy, you were at the, the Lions Bridge game on the road. I, I wasn't able to make it. What is there anything different you see in this match? Is it is it Tobacco Road setting up differently, or is it Li Lions Bridge just not playing as well? What, what do you think the biggest difference has been tonight so far? Because Tobacco Road certainly looked the better team. I think it's a combination of both, really. Tobacco Road doing much better in terms of performances than they have in recent form, and Lions Bridge just slow to start, slow out of the block, and weren't prepared for Tobacco Road to come at them that quickly, and. You know, they've gathered a foothold here midway through the first half and they're starting to connect passes, you know, create chances from these long throw-ins and they look to play better than this. Certainly, it's just had to really pose a question to you, Jimmy. Obviously, wasn't there and you had, you're right beside the bench, had one of the greatest views anybody could ask for that night. So, if anybody's going to know what happened in that disappointing result, it's going to be you and just di shocking to see, really, just because of how good Tobacco Road is, is solid. Is th if they look tonight, I mean, they really haven't played great, but they've definitely been on the front foot for, I would say, 90% of this game so far. So, like we said, responded really well, and hopefully they can keep it up. An absolutely brilliant shout out from Brightleaf Battalion. Love that. Love to see see that. You don't you don't hear commentators in the booth getting too many chances, Jamie. I, that's a first for me. I, I feel like I'm the man right now. I can't lie. Living the dream. I never got one as a player either. Mendoza and Rice saves it. There's another chance for Mendoza from distance, and we know he can hit them from there. Yes. Going back to that absolutely wonderful shout-out from the supporters group, Brightleaf Battalion, Paul Senio on the drums tonight. He's a Twitter legend, the man. Oh, yes, he is. and I might be a little bit biased, Jamie, but that may, might be my favorite favorite uh, tobacco uh, brightly battalion chant that I've heard this year. I mean, taking all the bias out of it, of course. I wonder why. Yeah, I know. Just try to be as unbiased as possible, but, I mean, that just might be my favorite one I've heard. It's a good ball from Wada. Del Rosario. Cutting inside. Pineda. He'll switch it over for Chain. Great Back lead there by Chompe Mendoza. And a poor touch from Del Rosario of that time. As Muntz will look to play out of the back. He's been forced out of play. Tobacco Road with good pressure on him. Not letting Lions Bridge out of their defensive third. As Devitt clears towards a formidable figure in Travis Cook. And it's been rolled by Mendoza off of Polka. Headed away by Devitt again. He's been in formidable form for Lions Bridge, anchoring that back line, the man from Longwood University and originally from Newcastle upon Tyne. You always good to see English players play in the PDL. Great, great level of soccer over there, but you know if it comes down to it, decent level of soccer here in the United States still growing. But I, I don't blame you know people coming over here and from, from England especially and wanting to play here because it's, it's a good level of soccer here as well. Maybe not up to the par as we see over in England, but you know definitely not a bad place to come and play your trade for, for a few years. Austin Graham was coming forward from wing back for Lions Bridge, and he was. Knocked out of play by Brad Ruhock. A cynical challenge and Linesbridge have a chance from this set piece. A dangerous position here for from a tobacco row perspective. Gotta be on the toes here and gotta gotta clear their lines. Can't can't fall asleep here because we just hate to see a goal let up off a, a set piece like this. In towards Devitt and Cretans did well to claim that one. 
Not the best delivery from Ivan Militar. Yeah, basically right at Cretans or right towards him. Easy enough for Cretans to come out and get a level uh, goalkeeper of his caliber. Pineda. As we see Jamie Dillon chaining acres of space over here. No one even looking for him. We've seen that a lot this season. It, the, we, they were lining up in a different 4-3-5 I believe it was a 3-5-2 earlier in the season. And we saw tons of space for the wingbacks. Obviously a 4-3-3 tonight, but still the same thing. Just Pineda sometimes getting on the ball with tons of time and just not looking out wide and, and pinging that ball because he's more than capable of doing that. Devitt with a long searching ball. And Cretans comes all the way off his line to head that. Miles from goal. Yeah, I love to see your goalie comfortable coming out of the box and using his head. And Creighton's certainly a guy who doesn't shy away from anything, so great clearance there. Creighton's looking like a goalkeeper miles away from the one he was in the away defeat. He looked shaky and shocked in that match, and so far tonight he's looked calm and composed. Yeah, he's been really solid tonight. Is, is done is when, when he's been called upon tonight, has done what he's needed to do. A couple of really good not really saves, but just coming out and gathering that ball, coming out and just it, – it's always nice as a defense when you have a goalie who's not scared to come off his line and, and just get in the air and either punch balls away or catch them. So he's done a great job tonight, and hopefully he's not called on too much. And But, you know, still so early in this game. So I'm sure there'll be he'll be called into action to make some saves, and hopefully he's up to the task because that away trip against Lionsbridge was just an uncharacteristic night for him and really the whole team. Lions Bridge have a chance to build out from the back. And just as I say that, Mendoza has robbed Lions Bridge of the ball. Fisher. It's a crucial block from Munz, but it's a corner for Tobacco Road. The first of the night for either side. A yeah, great bit of hustle there by Chompe. He cuts it back on his right foot. Don't know if that was the right decision to play Fisher there. Just did, wasn't, able, wasn't really ever going to be able to do too much with that ball in the position he was in. I... Would have liked to see him just put that ball in the mixer with a couple of tobacco road players already in the box, but nonetheless, great hustle by Champe. It's Del Rosario's ball in, and he didn't beat the first man, Militar. Munts. Won back well by Ruhark. And Graham will win a throw in. Off of Vincente Guiardo. One back well by Pineda, and then he gives it straight back to Jalon Brown. Polka. Now it's Munts. Crowded out by Mendoza and Pineda, but he's still going, Munts. And that ball was read easily by Mendoza. It was a great a bit of initial play by Munts to lose his defender, but just a poor ball there right to Mendoza as he gives it away straight back. Militar. And Cook just couldn't get on the end of the return ball. Mendoza was trying to switch it for Wada, and Wada wasn't quite aware of that ball. Yeah, Wada definitely not on the same wavelength as Chompe Mendoza there. You can see what Chompe was doing, and it honestly turned out to be a pretty good ball with the outside of his right foot, but top Wada nowhere near that ball. But good idea. You've seen Chompe really expressing himself tonight, really making some things happen going forward, so I'm not really mad at that ball. He's, he's looking to just create things, and you can't blame your attacking midfielder for doing things like that. 34 minutes gone. Still Tobacco Road leading Lions Bridge. A narrow scoreline, 1-0, but Tobacco Road, you have to say, have been the better team in this first half. A vast improvement from their past four performances as Militar looked to get the ball in, but chained it enough to see it back for Cretans. An interesting <laughs> throw out from the back from Cretans. It bobbled and Ruhak did well to get it back to him. It looks like he got caught in two minds there. Cretans was initially going to roll it out to Ruhak and saw the pressure coming in from behind and just tried to stop it. Well, and ended up being a bobble out there, but smart play by Ruhak to head it back. 
and Wada has been fouled on the far side. Be a free kick for Tobacco Road. Yeah, Austin Graham with a bit of a high boot. Not sure if Wada was actually touched by the boot. It looked a little bit late by him with his reaction, but nonetheless. Austin Graham not complaining too much about it, and the referee deciding not to go in his book, rightly so. It's Wado over the ball as well as Brad Ruhawk. Looks like Ruhawk is favoured for this free kick delivery. He's got Pineda, Mendoza, Fisher, and Del Rosario all waiting in the box. It's Wada instead who takes. It's a poor delivery from him. And Mendoza wins it back off Militar. Fisher battling for the ball as well. A yeah, bit a bit disappointed in top Wada after starting so brilliantly and scoring a goal within the first two minutes. Really just hasn't done much since and still looks like he's struggling a little bit with confidence, not wanting to get on the ball as much. Sure he's pushed out to that right side, but He's more than capable of getting that ball and taking his defender on, Austin Graham, and he surely hasn't done it too much tonight, so great start for him. Just hasn't really, you know, lived up to how good and how br not how brilliant, but how well he started this match on the front foot. But has a lone goal tonight, so you can't can't really blame him too much. Touch back for Pineda. Now Gallardo. Chain tracked down by Militar and Del Rosario with a good turn and a good change of pace as well. Mendoza, he's on side now, and the flag's gone up late here against Mendoza. Not sh quite sure why the linesman waited. Jamie, I don't think he knew anything about that one. He was running with Mendoza. As soon as Mendoza gets that ball and cuts back, the whole Lions Bridge defense has stopped. Pretty similar to that goal a couple weeks ago we saw against. Uh, when Charlotte Eagles came here and got that late victory controversially out of bounds when our whole our whole defense stopped and watched the ball. So not sure how much that the linesman knew about it, but I think he in the long run put his flag up just because of how hesitant the Lions Bridge defense was. So a good bit of strategy from them, even though it looked like Mendoza was on side. A great through ball there by Del Rosario after a great turn. But this Lions Bridge team is after a poor start is Found themselves back in a little bit as Creighton comes off his line and, and, and snatches that one quickly. They did well there against Cook, a formidable figure up top for Lions Bridge. There's quite a bit of height to him as well as a scoring prowess. Creighton's absolutely launches the ball yet again towards Wada. And Wada has forced the error from Graham. Yeah, and I hope Creighton goes back and listens to this. I grew up playing soccer with him for eight years and I remember when he couldn't kick the ball 20 yards as a goalkeeper so good to see him and now. our career has found Mendoza what a save by Joe Rice absolutely crucial touch from the goalkeeper and that was a throw and taken so quickly by Tobacco Road and nearly to perfect effect just caught the lines for his defense sleeping Jamie and Chumpy Mendoza been so good my man of the match so far I'm shocked he didn't put that one away deserves a goal tonight hopefully he gets one but He's just got to bury that. Good save by Joe Rice. Don't take anything away from him, but that was a great opportunity. Del Rosario's ball in. And Rice collects again. It he was, was an incredible chance for Mendoza there. Yeah, it was a great chance for him there. Just put it right at Joe Rice. Good save by him nonetheless. He had to do something. He had to make a save. He was forced into it, but... Mendoza's just been so good tonight. It's disappointing to see him not putting out of the back of the net because I think he deserves it. He's done some really good things. A guy that was really an integral in Tobacco Road season last year, one of the few returners on this team. So good to see him step up. And this time it's a mistake from Tobacco Road and Foster as well to make up for his error. Mendoza. Pineda. Challenged by Cook. Tobacco Road just doing well to keep possession under pressure. This time it's Wada chasing forward, nearly catching Joe Rice out. Graham was looking for Polka. Said it will be a throw in for Tobacco Road. 
with just five minutes left in this first half. Tobacco Road could well be on top by more than the 1-0 scoreline. Yeah, they definitely Line. could be. Sorry to interrupt you, Jamie. And as the sun kind of creeps in behind the clouds to our left, it's a really comfortable night for soccer right now. Mendoza. Little 4 for Pineda. And it's another good stop from Rice. Probably a, sha a save he should have been making nine times out of ten. Yeah, you're right, Jamie. A save that Joe Rice, a, a, you know, a goalkeeper of his caliber, should be making. But been caught into action a lot this half. And nothing he could really do about Top Wada's goal early on. But has made some really, really nice saves tonight. And I guess from a Lionsbridge perspective, they hope he keeps it up. From a Tobacco Road perspective, we hope he uh, dips off a little bit. Because he's, he's looked really solid back there. Polka gets to it first. Cook looking for Jalon Brown, and he didn't quite find the right ball for Brown to latch on to. It's just a little bit rushed at times from Lionsbridge. You see him trying to play on the counter, which is you know, not a bad strategy, especially against the Tobacco Road defense that struggled. But, you know, sometimes just playing through balls that aren't there and uncharacteristic, especially from how they played last week when they were just really deadly on the counter attack. And Sabaka Road fans lamenting this Lionsbridge side for long balls that have been played. Um, they haven't had too many other options but to go for the long ball and unsettle this Tobacco Road defence. Yeah, they haven't, and I don't necessarily think that was their game plan. I could be totally wrong. I haven't talked to the you know, manager or any Lionsbridge people before the game, but just at times not being patient and letting things, you know, making things happen, just deciding to send through balls and hoping, and you know, that's just not the way to play, especially you know, on the road against the Tobacco Road team that's got a point to prove. It was good work from Marshall McCartney coming forward in midfield for Lions Bridge. And nearly created something there. But make no mistake, Jamie, this Lions Bridge team is, is good. This is a good this is a good team, first year team, a team that's done really well in the PDL right now, sitting above Tobacco Road in the standings and fourth in the South Atlantic Division, so you know, after that thrashing last week, also had a really good tie against the Charlotte Eagles at home, which not sure how many of us expected that just be based on how the Charlotte Eagles have been. They've dipped a little bit in form since that uh, controversial victory here, sitting in third right now in the, in the South Atlantic Division. But this is a good this is a good Lionsbridge team that I think is going to, I would expect at least, to play, to play a, a little bit better in the second half. Cleared away by, cleared away by Al Correa. And it's Lionsbridge who are pushing for an equaliser right at the end of the half. Foster goes down and it's a free kick the other way. Not sure what the referee's given there. Looks like Foster might have fo followed through on his man. He's not happy with the decision. Yeah, from our view up here, Jamie, I wasn't really close enough to see what happened, but both players were certainly on the ground in a little bit of pain and Kellen Foster complaining a little bit. This is a dangerous position. If you're a referee, you got to be certain that's a foul here if you're giving a, a free kick up right outside the box. But obviously the referee saw what he saw and got, definitely got a better vantage point than I do up here. It's a good position for Miller Tartai to deliver a ball in or try and go for goal in Tesserine Cretans. It's Miller Tartai. Can't even beat the third man, Al Korea. One of the shortest men on the pitch, Al Korea. And Ball couldn't get over him. Wada hooked back into the air by Fisher. And Mendoza nearly did well to keep that on the ground. Munts. Can Lions Bridge find an equalising goal and go into half time in a different mindset? And Graham couldn't get his touch right there. It's a goal kick for Tobacco Road. The Lions were certainly enjoying a little bit more possession so far late on in this in this first half. Tobacco Road, we've seen it a couple of times this season drop off a little bit as 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 the as halves come to an end. And 
something they need to work on, certainly, because they were definitely on the front foot for most of this first half, but over the past few minutes, it just hasn't been the case. We're hearing now that the referee is going to give an one additional minute at the end of the first half. Not been too many stoppages since the very beginning of this match. Maybe would have liked to see an extra minute or so added to that, just based off a couple of yellow cards that were given and a couple of the fouls that were called, but nonetheless, one minute's fair enough. Brown has forced it through for Cork, and it's a straightforward stop for Ryan Cretans, but it was a good chance for Lionsbridge to try and equalise. Tobacco Road, the defence just falls asleep there. It's too easy. It's just too easy for me. You, you, you're in control of this game. Why are you letting Lionsbridge get, get a shot in your, in your box? With less than a minute to play in the half, you got you got to you got to stay awake. You got to stay focused on the game. I don't care how much time's left. I don't care if it's uh, 20 minutes or, or five seconds. You always got to be on top, and that's what we saw against the Charlotte Eagles a couple weeks ago. Just a defense, obviously a controversial decision, but a lackadaisical effort and falling asleep for a second. And that's all it takes. So just can't be letting up shots like that so late in the half because if this game if this game goes 1-1 into the halftime break. It's a totally different match going into the second half, and that's just not what Tobacco Road needs. They need a response, and they need three points tonight. Looks like all the Lions Bridge men are forcing themselves forward. So Rice will take the free kick deep towards Devitt, headed away by Pineda. And Cretans will come. And it will be a corner for Lions Bridge. A little bit disappointed there from Gallardo. Should have should have been yelling at Pineda to leave that. He certainly had a better vantage put on that header and could have at least headed it out. But poor communication there. Be Militar to take. Headed away by Pineda again. And that is the end of the first half. Tobacco Road FC leading Lionsbridge here in Durham 1-0. Goal early on from Tafwada. He was found easily in the box and finished calmly past Joe Rice. Rice has been tested throughout the half and Ryan Cretans towards the end being tested as well. But as it stands, Tobacco Road have their 1-0 advantage. And coming up after this short break, we'll have our halftime analysis for you here from Durham County Memorial Stadium.
Well, Redemption Knight has lived up so far in the first half for Tobacco Road. They have a 1-0 advantage over Lionsbridge here at Durham County Memorial Stadium as the players are back out on the pitch, just getting ready to get back underway here for the second half. And it was only positive signs for Tobacco Road in the first half. Lionsbridge just sleeping. Yeah, Tobacco Road started off really well through Toss Water, able to you know, put the ball in the back of the net and get that early 1-0 lead. Something Tobacco Road really needed going forward after you know, some disappointing results in the past couple of weeks. But, you know, besides that, I thought Tobacco Road played really well for about the first 20 minutes. And there was a little bit of a lull period up until about the 35th minute where both teams were pretty even. And then, you know, I hate to say it, but the last 10 minutes or so of that first half, I thought Lionsbridge was the better team. Uh, you know, Chompy Mendoza for Tobacco Road has been really good if I'm, you know, if I'm the manager uh, Brian Wellman, you know, stepping in for Cedric Burton tonight at halftime. I'm saying, Chape, keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, guys, give Chape the ball because he looks like he, when he gets it, things happen. And that's what you want from your attacking midfielder. So I thought it was a really good first half from Tobacco Road. I, I was just a little bit disappointed to see the drop-off in intensity and the drop-off in and really just commitment to the cause because they started off, you could tell, you could see it. They started off with that purpose and with a passion for playing. And, you know, a really a decent first half. I'm not going to sit here and say it was great, but it was a lot better than we've seen recently. And, Definitely made Lionsbridge look like a, a team, you know, a totally different team than, than about a week ago. So if they can just bring that intensity level back up to where it started in the first half, I think this team can, Tobacco Road team, can grab at least two more goals. And, you know, I don't really see Lionsbridge scoring tonight because going forward, they just haven't really had anything going on. The only dangerous, you know, spots they've had or bits of play they've had have been from, from set pieces. So it's been a good first half. I, I thought it was really entertaining. And, and, and hopefully Tobacco Road can, can, can continue to keep this intensity up because, you know, this game isn't far far from over and it's been in the midfield and the final third where Tobacco Road have really been bossing it Taf Wada looked dangerous every time he brought the ball forward and not only scored the opening goal and did well to finish that but he's created other chances and you know created channels where there weren't some before yeah Taf Wada's a guy we talked about pregame Jamie that we kind of called on him and, and the, the absence of Eli Gardner a guy that's been around was here last year for Tobacco Road and has just played it in the PDL for so long. You know, losing him through suspension, he needed a guy to step up. Eli Gardner's played well. Excuse me, not Eli Gardner. Um, ben Fisher's played well tonight as well, stepping in for Eli Gardner. He was been the, really the direct replacement. But I think Toph Wada for at least the first 20 minutes of that half was excellent. And uh, we mentioned it in the first half, or at least I did. I thought he dropped off a little bit. Just didn't really seem as eager to get on the ball because it's funny when I think you would agree with me, Jay. When Toph Wada's on the ball, he just makes things happen. He's very similar to Chompe Mendoza going forward when you want your playmakers to be on the ball at all times. So, you know, if I'm Tobacco Road, I'm, I'm looking for my dangerous guys in Toph Wada and, and Champe Mendoza and just trying to keep things going through them because, like we've mentioned many times, when they're on the ball, things usually happen. So why not continue to try to get them guys the ball in the second half? And that is exactly what they will be looking to do. And not to overshadow the effort by the other players, Kellen Foster slotting back into that back line position in centre back and not looking like he had been missing. As well as Vincente Gallardo coming back into the squad, having played every match this season and you know, starting again for him, he's looked immense at the back as well. Pineda doing a job in midfield alongside Mendoza who's come back into the team and gone forward quite a bit and had a few chances in the early in the early goings for Tobacco Road. Yeah, he has. And remember, early in the first half, Jamie, with, you know, Al Correa and Pineda winning the book really early. So, wouldn't be surprised to maybe see a couple of changes from Brian Wellman in the second half. You, obviously, with your two holding midfielders sitting on yellow cards, you, you, that's always a little bit dangerous because it just takes one poor challenge. And we've seen some inconsistent refereeing tonight as well. So, it takes one questionable challenge for things to go sideways, and you're you know just like that, you're down to ten men. But Overall, I think you'd agree with me, it's, it, was a, it was a good first half from Tobacco Road, and it was a lot better first half than we've seen in the past four games or so, and probably the best half they've had in close to a month. So good response from them, playing back at home, a really decent crowd tonight. Brightleaf Battalion's out in full forces. Shouldn't be any sort of lack of motivation from this team, and just hoping they can keep it up in the second half because, you know, one no lead is nowhere. This game is nowhere near over. one no lead's extremely dangerous because if Lions Bridge – grab one early this game completely changes but on the other hand if Tobacco Road grab one early and they're sitting pretty and, and can really push forward from there on. Chris Wally has looked to bring on two new players for Lions Bridge substitute Gail Kisombe as well as Jamie Gunderson have come onto the pitch for Lions Bridge <laughs> 
Yeah, not surprised to see some changes from Lionsbridge. I just thought they really lacked some creativity going forward and really just didn't really look like they had an idea at times. Overpowered in that midfield as well, so not surprised to see some changes there from Chris Wally, the, the Lionsbridge manager. Mendoza, Pineda. Is this to be the start that they had at the second half as well as the first? And Fisher has just been caught offside. The flag is up. It's a good finish from him, but it looked like Joe Rice may have given up early on that chance for Tobacco Road. Yeah, you kind of just see it in, in Ben Fisher's body language. He knew he was offside. He kind of hesitated a little bit, kind of slowed down. You could kind of tell, and the referee, was, the linesman, excuse me, was very quick to put that flag up. Right call from him. Headed on by Brown. And Fisher couldn't get on the end of the ball. Excuse me, that's Simon Fitch for Lionsbridge. And Ruhawk will look for Mendoza. Win another throw in for Tobacco Road. Good run there for Mendoza. Just been a tireless worker tonight. I, I don't think he gets tired. He's, he just hasn't stopped running. He's so quick, too, and quick and agile. He's to keep it up in the second half. He's been the best player on the pitch for me. It looks like Ivan Militar was pushed forward a bit there. And Fitch has also come forward with the changes for Lionsbridge. Almost a change in personnel and a change in formation as they shift some of their more defensive midfielders who have attacking ability forward. They brought on more strong defensive units in Kasombe and Gunderson. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, Jamie, you can't really blame him for doing that. Kasombe, definitely a big physical presence in that midfield now. Someone to kind of go against the likes of Pineda, who's got a lot of height on him. He's a really extremely, extremely physical player as well. So good change there from a Lionsbridge perspective. We'll just see if it works out for them. Chains ball in. And Pineda. Finds Wada. A wonderful turn. Still going, Wada. Oh, that's brilliant from him. Couldn't quite find the shot. And then Mendoza loses out, but he'll win it back here. He's let it run for Del Rosario. Now it's Champe Mendoza. Cleared away by Devitt. And Del Rosario will pick up the loose ball. And it's a goal kick in the end. Good defending from Gunderson. I think Tafwata just kind of does what he wants when he wants to do it. I mean, that was lovely from him. Waited a little bit too long to give that ball up. Almost wanted to make too many things happen. He beat a couple of guys brilliantly. Had Mendoza for the layoff. Waits a little bit too long and just puts a little bit too much on that pass that in the long run kind of broke down the attack because it gave Lionsbridge the ability to win it back. But, I mean, Tafwata is just such a fun player to watch. I just enjoy watching him every time we come out here. And, just makes things happen, and that left foot is so dangerous. It's a good ball from Mendoza to find Wada. And it's Ivan Militar holding off Brad Ruhak as he goes down in a heap. It'll be a free kick for Lionsbridge. Yeah, Militar a little bit shaken up there. Did well. Just a little bit more pacey than Ruhak. Ruhak not the fastest player, but he's certainly physical. Definitely didn't shy away from that physical bout battle with Militar. Devitt. Back to Joe Rice. Who had a mixed bag of a first half. Conceded early. Not much he could do about that. But after that he'd been called into action quite a few times. And was there for Lionsbridge to keep the score just at 1-0. Yeah, Joe Rice certainly had the busier of first halves from a goalkeeper's perspective. Compared to Ryan Creighton's down in the Tobacco Road net. But didn't really make any saves that were... Exceptional. A lot of the saves he made were expected from a level, you know, a level of goalkeeper he is. Routine saves, if, if you will. And hopefully we can get a little bit more dangerous shots on him in the second oh, half. Wonderful from Wada. And Del Rosario didn't quite have the pace. He's being fouled by the goalkeeper. The referee gives nothing. We're not quite sure why he hasn't given a free kick there. And Joe Rice had been caught out there by. Del Rosario, and it looked to have been obstruction at the very least. I mean, Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you extend your arm out and they're not playing the ball, that's a foul ten times out of ten, I thought. 
I mean, I, that's how I interpret the rule book, but I mean, I'm not trying to criticize referees, and that's not what I want to do. That's not why I'm out here, but just been a little bit too inconsistent tonight. We, we touched on it in the first half. There's just some fouls that I think are fouls that just aren't called. Lionsbridge trying to force their way through, and it's a corner. It took a touch off Foster as Polka trying to go forward for Lionsbridge, and Militar will deliver this set piece for Lionsbridge. Just saw goalkeeper Joe Rice for Lionsbridge give a look at his bench and give a little a little with a cheeky smile there. He knew he knew exactly what he was doing. And it's come all the way through and Devitt missed by inches from getting his head on that delivery. And Jamie, too many times this season on corners, defensively tobacco road has just let some balls bounce. Well they just need to get someone has to step up and clear it. That could have easily been an opportunity from Lionsbridge. You can't let balls bounce in, the, in your, your your own goal box like that. But luckily it went all the way through. But, you know, you think from a player's perspective, someone just needs to step up and I don't care where you kick the ball, just get it out of there. Don't let it bounce in the box a couple of times. That's, that's when things happen that unexpectedly and goals go in undeservingly. So, But Tobacco Road have been solid defensively most of the night. Can't really put too much criticism on them overall. Jane has brought down Polka cynically there. And it's another set piece opportunity for Lionsbridge. Who will look to get their big men forward from the back, including Tom Devitt. Kasombe is also waiting in the box. Fitch just on the outside of the area. And the ever dangerous Jalon Brown is also there for Lionsbridge. Another dangerous position here for Lionsbridge. It's a good delivery from Militar, and it's an even better claim from Ryan Cretans. Pineda. It's a good ball forward for Ruhak. Fisher. Javi Alcaria. It's a cheeky nutmeg. He nearly lost out there. Mendoza. That's a cynical challenge from Fitch. He's lucky he didn't catch Mendoza there. It could have been a yellow card for him. That's a poor ball from Polka. And Foster as well to switch it over all the way for Dylan Chain. Mendoza. Being chipped at by Kisombe and still. And the referee now gives the free kick. In favour of Tobacco Road. Yeah, we've seen Lionsbridge, you know, tonight just give the ball away a little bit too much in that midfield. They have counter-attacking opportunities, but just look a little bit nervous and a little bit rushed when they get the ball. It's a good ball from Pineda for Del Rosario. Excellent skill from Del Rosario. Fisher just couldn't work an opening. Wada. Tamaka Road keeping it on the edge of the area. Still with Wada, it's a good ball for Fisher! That's an even better finish from Ben Fisher. Tobacco Road are 2-0 up. And Lionsbridge look down and out. And Jamie, give, you gotta give a lot of credit for Ben Fisher for putting that ball in the back of the net, but can't say enough about Joaquin Del Rosario and Toff Wada. And Ben Fisher recognized that right after he scores. That's who he goes straight to. Those guys with a lovely bit of Skill had to play it on the streets of, of Durham, Jamie. I, just just toying with defenders, playing with that ball, making guys miss, and just a cheeky little through ball. I can't lie, Jamie. I thought Ben Fisher was off size. Obviously, referee and the linesman in great positions. Yeah, you know, no real um, complaints from the uh, from a linesman's perspective. So that's a huge goal, Jamie. Games can be decided in the first ten minutes or so of a half, and that is exactly what Tobacco Road needed. And, 2-0 victory, although it is the dangerous, most dangerous lead in soccer. That's crucial and hopefully opens this Lions Bridge team because they're gonna have to go forward even more now. And you know, defensively they haven't looked great and going forward they just haven't had anything. So that's a big goal, Jamie. And hopefully they can tobacco road can keep this up because that was that was fun to watch. That was a brilliant goal right there. I think that should be on the uh, definitely in consideration for PDL goal of the week. Al Korea trying to work another opening. And who was on the end of that delivery 
none other than Tafwada. Del Rosario had a, a part to play in that build-up as well as Mendoza. It was just good play on the edge of the area, patient build-up. Not trying to force an opening and Wada just managed to get a touch on the ball and feed it through for Fisher whose finish was nothing short of sensational. Yeah, extremely chemical from Fisher. And I mean, Jamie, we've said it, we pretty much say it every game. Tough Wada, when he's on the ball, he makes things happen. So it's a little bit frustrating at times watching this team because sometimes Tough Wada just isn't on the ball enough for me. Because every time he gets it, he seems to just open up defenses. Defenses have to put a little bit more attention on him. You'll usually see at least two guys step to him just because of how tricky he is. That opens other players up. So, yeah, Tough Wada. A goal and an assist tonight. Been sensational. And just what the doctor ordered, a great, great start to the first half and a great start to the second half for Tobacco Road. Kellen Foster did well to win the header. Chain, Pineda. Del Rosario losing out, but Chain will chase this loose ball. Devitt sees it back for Joe Rice, who's giving it straight back to Tobacco Road. And Pineda couldn't do much with the ball from Mendoza as Wada comes all the way back brilliantly and wins the ball off Munts. That's fantastic tracking back from the right winger for Tobacco Road. Mendoza on Graham. Did well to get tight to him and Graham has been forced into an error. Fisher. Can he get a second tonight? Been denied once by the offside flag. He's got his first goal and may not be the last tonight we see from Ben Fisher. Certainly hope not, Jamie. Fitch. Militar. Lionsbridge trying to get themselves back in this match and that was the clean challenge and the referee awards a corner for Lionsbridge and Fitch feels like he had been brought down there but from just about every angle the decision went the way that the referee called it. Huntley Munn is going to be coming on for Tobacco Road as Brad Ruhark will make way. Bit of a more uh, attacking option. In the wing back is Huntley Munn. Militar takes. It was in towards the back post and cleared away by Ben Fisher. And James Ellis coming on the field for Lionsbridge as well. Looks like he's going to slot in as a, a holding midfielder. Or maybe a right. Excuse me. Looks like he's sliding in as a right back. So defensive change for Lionsbridge. Can't really blame him. They haven't defended well tonight at all. Ellis. Oh, it's a lovely ball. And it was cut back, but Gallardo cleared it away. Yeah, excuse me on that, James Ellis. Just getting confused on the field real quick. James Ellis actually sliding in as a attacking midfield an option. I was thinking he was playing defense. Got the got my size of the field mixed up, Jamie. Honest mistake, I guess, but inexcusable from a commentator's perspective, would you say? I'm going to be regretting that one for a few weeks now. Yeah, if I, I'm glad I don't have a coach or anything, because he'd probably take me straight out of the game for some a mistake like that, but. I held myself accountable nonetheless. It's an honest mistake. It happens. It happens, I guess. I'll, I'll, I'll shake it off. Del Rosario linking up well with Pineda. Al Correa. Now Mendoza trying to flick it on towards Fisher. That would have been a brilliant ball. And Militar with a good ball of his own towards Brown. And Cretins comes, does very well to get rid of the ball there. And that's a silly challenge from Cretins on Brown there. Or was it Polka? No, it is Jalon Brown. Incensed by Ryan Cretins. Not quite sure why he did that, but the referee is just telling Cretins to calm down a bit. Looks like the referee is going in his book. Not surprisingly, we've seen some... Questionable yellow card has been given out tonight, and I think that one certainly probably deserves one from Cretans. But I'd love to see the passion from him. He comes out, I think he felt like he was caught a little bit because, you know, having to make a header there is always going to be a collision there. But can't really blame Cretans. A yellow card, harmless. You'd 
can't really see your goalkeeper getting another yellow card unless he just uh, makes a you know a boneheaded play or something like that. So I love to see that passion. This tobacco Road team needs that going into the rest of the season because they just, they just really can't afford to drop any more games. And if that's what it takes to win and that's what it takes to motivate your teammates, then you know I'm, I have no problem with it. It'll be a throw in four lines bridge. They decided to change the three of uh, throw in taker that is. The lines were so dangerous with throw ins. Uh, just a couple of guys can throw that ball a mile. It was in towards Militar and Del Rosario would clear it, and it's not the best of strikes there from Gunderson. very unlikely that Cretans will get another yellow card here tonight but just might want to be careful coming out of his six yard area from now on yeah he's certainly got to be careful a guy that plays with a ton of passion been the starter down at UNC Wilmington for the past couple of seasons has been exceptional for them in the CAA and it's a guy that I haven't known him for so long he's someone you just don't want to mess with when he when he He's a no-nonsense kind of guy, very physical kind of guy, but always wants to make things happen. And it's, it's been, I know it's been a tough couple of weeks for him because he's just a guy that just hates losing. So not surprised to see a little bit of reaction there from him. He's, he's playing with a little bit of passion tonight, and you know, I think you'd agree. I have no problem with that. And Militar's ball is too long this time. Mon. Pineda. Al Korea. Back for Huntley Mon. Dylan Chain making another galloping run forward, but so is Del Rosario. He's got Wada alongside him. It's a good challenge from Fitch to win the ball back, crucially, but Wada has won it back for Tobacco Road. And then Kasombe couldn't quite get a challenge in there. Is that a penalty? The referee says no. Not a penalty for me either, Jamie. I think Asambe got the ball there. It was pretty clear he got the ball there. Militar. Kisambe. Let me just add real quick, Jamie. Joaquin Del Rosario has been electric in the second half. He played a huge part in that first goal, with, uh, second goal, excuse me, with a great bit of skill. But every time he gets the ball on that left wing so far, especially early on in the second half. He's making things happen. Reminds me of Toph Wada. Just, just how defenders have to have to play against him differently because you just don't know what he's going to do. And great bit of skill for him tonight. Great to see him back in the lineup. He's been a guy that has been with this club since the very beginning. A loyal servant. Not always a starter in your starting 11, but been exceptional tonight. Gallardo. Tobacco Road struggling to get the ball out of their own half. It's a free kick and the referee's given handball against El Rosario. As Militar will look to put in a good delivery. He hasn't had one so far. For Lions Bridge. Zayla looking to get back into this one. Another dangerous position. I can't seems like the fourth or fifth free kick we've seen from this same position tonight for Lions Bridge. Headed away by Gallardo. And hooked high into the air by Mendoza. And Ellis couldn't quite bring the ball down from the sky. Got to give some credit to Chape Mendoza there. He's the guy give, putting pressure on Ellis. Kind of leads to that poor touch. Always gonna, was going to be difficult to, to settle that from that such a high ball like that, especially when you're running out of bounce towards the end line. But Mendoza's just been everywhere tonight tireless performance from him so far and they need him to keep it up in the next 25 minutes or so Fitch looks like he's playing at center back now for Lions Bridge Polka trying to get around Gallardo but just couldn't 
So immense is Vincente Gallardo. A dominant figure in that Tobacco Road defence. Really solid performance tonight from him. Alcaria tried to turn on Ellis and Ellis won the ball back. Now it's Fitch. Kasombe. Fitch again. Devitt. This is better from Lionsbridge. Another long searching ball for Jalon Brown to chase. Up against Kellen Foster and Foster did very well. Wada had no time to turn as Kasombe was right on him. Months for Lionsbridge and Wada was being held back there momentarily. But finds Del Rosario on the far side. Del Rosario being bumped and battered but he's coming forward for Tobacco Road. Up against Devitt. Back for Fisher. Straight at Joe Wright. And that was a lovely build-up from Tobacco Road. The only thing it lacked was a finish. Oh, my. Joaquin Del Rosario has been so good in this second half. Every time he gets the ball, he's making things happen. But another questionable decision. But going back to that chance, for me, Fisher's got to bury that plan as the central striker. Joaquin Del Rosario does everything to make that chance happen. And when he gets the ball, you're not taking it from him tonight. You might as well just go find someone else to defend. Exceptional play from Joaquin Del Rosario. The fans not happy with the referee's decision there. And it seems like the Lionsbridge players have been fouled for the most part, but some questionable decisions. But nonetheless, Tobacco Road have done well to not let Lionsbridge in tonight as they make another change. Ben Fisher, the goal scorer of the second goal coming off. On comes Oscar Moreno after suffering an ankle injury against North Carolina FC under 23s, where he was brought off at half time in the away fixer where they lost 2-1. It's come back on at four, Tobacco Road. And his first appearance in three matches. Ellis. Munt. Cleared away by Pineda. Kisombe. Linesburg really pushing for a way back into this match. Devitt and Brown goes down in a heap. Or oh, was that Ivan Militar who goes down in the heap? Yeah, Militar going down very theatrical. And doesn't, you know, Kellen Foster tries to make amends with him and he d denies the handshake, so. Delosario did well to win it back for Tobacco Road and Mendoza gives it up this time. And Munn wins it straight back. De Rosario looking for Tafwada. And he's done very well to win a corner. Absolutely brilliant from Tafwada. Just didn't give up on that ball. And laxadaisical defending at the very least. From the number 12 for Lions Bridge, Marshall McCartney. That's just poor play. And Chris Wally has to be furious about that. Bit comical, Jamie from McCartney kind of went in with that cockiness like oh I got this ball you know Tafwada's not getting anywhere near me and Tafwada just runs right past him McCartney doesn't even try to shield the ball questionable defending from him but you know got to give a lot of credit to Tafwada as well because if he doesn't hustle and keep running after that ball that never happens Mendoza's ball in looking for Pineda it's flicked on by Munts for Brown to chase Shane does well to find Cretans his UNCW college teammate Headed away by Chain again. And another UNCW man finds another Seahawk. Foster to Munn. You're always good to have a, a goalkeeper from the same school as a couple of your defenders. You know how they play. Confident with how they play. You know what to expect from them and how they you know, are physically and, and everything like that. So, Been a really good performance from this Tobacco Road defense so far tonight. Definitely got to keep it up for these last 20 minutes or so, but... Can't really criticize them too much. Only thing I will say is Tobacco Road at times is fouled in some dangerous areas and just put in some very physical, bit lackadaisical challenges that were a little bit unnecessary. But that's really the only criticism I can, can have of them so far. Max Polker has made way for Cleef Desir for Linesbridge. Another change up front. As 
as they look to get themselves back into this one. Can't see a way through for them so far. Yeah, got to agree with the decision to, to bring on a, a different attacking option, an extra attacker. I mean, you got to chase the game from if you're from a Lions Ridge perspective right now. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. It doesn't matter if you lose this game 4 0 by chasing or 2 0 by doing nothing. A loss is a loss, so they, they got to go after this game. Oscar Moreno has come in for Tobacco Road and playing in a central role up front, and it's a good challenge from Foster. So he has to get back into his centre back role. Wada did brilliantly to win the ball back there for Tobacco Road. been nothing short of a dribbling masterclass from Wada tonight who's looked brilliant in sparks but you know nothing too consistent from the man up front but he also hasn't seen the ball too much yeah my only real criticism of Taf Wada is he has a tendency to drift in and out of games a little bit too much in it for a guy with his skill skill level and ability you just don't want to see that you want to see him continuing to want the ball you know, very similar to like what Chompe Mendoza is. There's rarely a time tonight that Chompe Mendoza hasn't been demanding that ball and running everywhere. And that's my really only criticism of, of Top Water because, like we've said many times, when he gets the ball, good things happen. There's really no other way to put it. You can't sugarcoat that fact. So it's only really only real criticism I can have because he's such a great player. And really happy that he's transferred from Bethel to North Carolina down the road because I think he's going to do some really good things in the ACC. And he's got a really good chance to, to make it at the, at the professional level here in the United States as well. His father being a professional player himself, Wada following in his footsteps. And the early signs for Tobacco Road is that he is quite a player. Cedric Burke saying himself early on in this season, Taff is a very special player and he expects great things out of Tobacco Road's number nine. Yeah, really couldn't have said it any better than than Burke said it earlier in this season. He's he just has natural ability. You can see it. You can't teach some of the stuff he does. He's naturally gifted, and it's, I'm glad he's, he's making the most of his gift. Oh, Korea is fouled this time by Brown. It's just a bit soft for me, Jamie. We've seen some harder fouls that have just gone unnoticed tonight. A little push in the back, and referee blows his whistle. We've seen guys get taken out, and no ball being played, and the referee is just played on. So, going to stop criticizing, though. Tough job down there, but it's just a little bit frustrating from a watching a game when you see things just not get called and then some soft fouls just, you know no hesitation with the whistle being blown but done a decent job so far nonetheless I'm not going to hate on him too much I think he's handled the game well for the most part Munts trying to force something for Lions Bridge it's Wada who clears Kisombe closed down quickly by Pineda a line there from Pineda Lions Bridge still with possession Militar goes down in a heap again Got to be careful, Militar. Doesn't want to get booked for diving or possibly lose out possession cheaply, thinking that he's been fouled. Mendoza. Chain. As he looks to come forward, it's a poor ball back to him from Wada. Uncharacteristic from Mustafa Wada. Bit, bit like a days ago, was kind of on his heels there for that pass. And like we were touching on, he is at times makes some mistakes like that. And seems like from a lack of concentration at times, he's coming off the. Looks like he's coming off the field. And disappointing to see because he's played a hand in both goals and is. Don't know if he's been the best player on the pitch for Tobacco Road tonight, but he's been going forward. He's really been threatening with everything he's done. It looks like Tommaso D'Agostino has come on. For Los Toros, as Wada does make way. Just starting to lose a bit of energy. Tough Wada. Not a player that you can usually play for 90 minutes as he's being seen by a trainer. Might have picked up a nick during yeah. his 74 minutes of play tonight. So he's getting ready to, to ice that, that right ankle. I'm not sure if it was bothering pre-match, but nonetheless, a good performance from him. Here's D'Agostino's first touch on the ball. Pineda, Chain, now D'Agostino being fouled and then nearly <laughs> shoved. This is poor defending from Lions Bridges. Tobacco Road looks iced. The cake, Moreno round the goalkeeper. 
Three nil. That is a wonderful goal from Tobacco Road FC. And that should be three points for Los Toros. Moreno with the goal, comes off the bench to score and Devitt is down in a heap as he tried to heroically clear the ball off the line. He didn't get there and took a knock against the post instead. Jamie, that was an instant impact from Tommaso D'Agostino. Beautiful bit of skill was just waiting for him to play that through ball. What a ball that was for him, for, for Moreno as well. Set up on a platter, but make no mistake, Moreno so smart to round that, the goalkeeper. And what a tough angle to slot that ball in. And disappointed to see a Lionsbridge defender down because he unfortunately hit his knee really hard on that post, his left leg. Hopefully he's all right. But he is definitely shaken up. Def haven't seen him bend that left leg since he hit the post. So a bit of a worry here from a, from a Lionsbridge perspective, but. Going forward, Tom Devitt could be quite a loss if he's not all right here after colliding with the post with his knee. He's back up. He's not quite stood up yet. Looks like he's going to try and walk it off. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jamie. Was Devitt the one who was received the kick in the chest last week from Eli Gardner as well? So been a rough couple of games from him. Physically, at least. He collided with the post so violently that it moved from its position on the right-hand side. It looks like he's just going to walk it off and may or may not return to the pitch. I love the commitment from Devitt there, though. Putting his body on the line in a dangerous position. Can't blame him. In. And make no mistakes, Devitt almost saved that ball. That ball just trickled in. Ended up hitting the post as well. So good hustle there from Devitt. Looks like he's all right, and that's good to see. But certainly favoring that left leg. It'll be interesting to see if he carries on tonight. Looks like a bit of a lost cause for Lionsbridge at this point. Still 13 minutes left, a bit of time. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him make way for another defender and you know just put some ice on that leg and, and get ready for the next game. Hazuki Hashizume has come on for Lionsbridge. Ivan Militar has made way for the bridge. Brennan Burton also coming on for Lionsbridge as well. Looks like Devitt is the man who's been replaced. And Moreno loses out. Ellis. Looking for Burton. Seen away by Chain. Tobacco Road could well score more than three tonight. A bit of uh, vengeance after being beaten 6-0. With 3-0 down before they had a man sent off and then conceded three more with ten men. And scoring more and making amends for that loss could be on the minds of quite a few players tonight. Many of them had travelled to that match and partook in it. Yeah, what an interesting matchup it's been this season. Nine goals between the teams. Six for Lionsbridge, obviously, and three here. Both being shut out so far, so really a tale of two games. Completely opposite performances. And I uh, guess you've never heard the term home field advantage, but certainly applied in this matchup. And there's a chance here for Lionsbridge. Foster is brought down. His man in the box. And it's going to be a penalty. And a chance for Lionsbridge to get back into this one. It was a silly challenge from Foster. Not quite sure what he was thinking. Yeah, we saw Kellen Foster just stick that left leg out, cramp it up right now. But just a poor decision by him. Doesn't necessarily need to do that. Unfortunately, he's caught out in the first place for that chance to even happen. So you can kind of see, trying to make amends for it. But in the end, just gives up a penalty kick. Uh, Tobacco Road's been in control of this game for 80 minutes. And now they're giving uh, Lionsbridge a bit of a lifeline. Still should be a comfortable enough lead for Tobacco Road to see this one out. But just falling asleep again. And it's been a bit of a characteristic this season for Tobacco Road. They get a little bit too comfortable at times with the leads they have. Let's see if Creedence can make a save here. He's more than capable of doing it. It'll be months to take the Spaniard from the spot. Up against the formidable Ryan Cretans. 
and he buries the penalty. 3-1. And Lions Ridge are right back in this one. Ten minutes to go. But it is a lifeline for the boys in blue. Yeah, and I'm from Brian Wellman, the tobacco road manager, stepping in tonight. I might look at taking Kevin Foster out. Looks a little bit more comfortable now, but he's been favoring that cramp in that left leg for ever since he gave up that penalty there. But yeah, poor decision by him. He had a, he's played really solid tonight, so not going to put too much criticism on him, but just a foul he didn't need to make. And uh, leads to a goal tonight, but Tobacco Road, still a two-goal lead. A little bit under 10 minutes to play. They should be fine in seeing this one out, but you just never want to let a team back in this game, and Creighton's will be a little disappointed too because he had a clean sheet. This game had a clean sheet written all over it. And you can see Lionsbridge have a new life, a new energy. Pressing harder and looking more positive as another Lions player goes down easily and it's another shot. This time from Cleef to see the man who was brought down for the penalty and Cretans does well to save what could be considered a tame effort. Marshall Hodge will be coming on for Tobacco Road shortly. Yeah, I think you would be shocked if he doesn't come from for Kellen Foster because unfortunately Foster's coming a bit of a liability right now with that left leg. He's not he's not comfortable on this field, not moving well at all. Here is Foster and he just decides to boot that one clear. Might be his last touch of the game. If, if, if he's not feeling, he just needs to go down. And it will be Kellen Foster who comes off. Marshall Hodge will come on. Man who can fill just about any of those sorts of positions. A versatile player for Tobacco Road. And a very dedicated one as well. See Kellen Foster. It's a decent throw there of his captain's armband. A little bit short of Pineda, but decent arm there from Foster tonight as well. Headed away by Al Korea. Hashizume was trying to get on the end of that throw in. And Lionsbridge will try to cause havoc with their long throw ins. Hodge it is who heads it away this time. Just on from the bench. Hodge again. Devitt flicks it back towards Kisombe. And his header is just wide of the post. And Gallardo goes down in a heap. He might have been caught by Kisombe. I'm yeah, sure if the referees missed something there. I think he was. I think Kambi just kind of stuck that arm out a little bit late. And I mean, if the other team's going to do that this late in the match, I'm, I'd milk it too. I'm Gallardo in a little bit of discomfort. But I think he'll end up being fine. But it's all about time wasting right now. Tobacco Road unfortunately find themselves on the back foot a little bit. So. Oh, and it looks like he's definitely been caught. And blood like on his hand. Yeah, it does look like he's bleeding, Jamie. Unfortunate to see. Maybe two defensive changes that we need to see in this Tobacco Road back line. I've already seen one with Kellen Foster coming out. And this back line has been so good tonight as well. So you just don't want to see that this late in the match. Especially with the goal being given back just a couple of minutes ago. Just hoping these subs can come on and, and, and keep the consistent and, and level up. And Michael Bamba comes on for Vincente Gallardo. And it's going to be a height difference now in central defense. As it will be Bamba and Hodge, the two centre-backs for the remaining seven minutes plus added time. And that could be a worry for Tobacco Road. D'Agostino did well to pressure Muntz and Ellis did well to get through. Strong challenge there from Bamber. Got to assert his... The physicality on his game. He's a physical player. Not the tallest guy, but he's certainly a physical guy. So he needs to assert that in the last few minutes because this is a dangerous part of the game right here. Linesbridge is looking extremely confident going forward now. Linesbridge looking to cut the deficit just down to one. 
Five minutes remaining to do so. And Tobacco Road in desperate need of three points after a four match losing streak or on the verge of a huge win here at Durham County Memorial Stadium. Goals from Taf Wada, Ben Fisher and Oscar Moreno giving them the 3-1 advantage. Munts finishing off a penalty opportunity has cut the deficit down to 3-1. Just two goals in between these two sides. Tobacco Road have been the better team for the majority of the match but Lionsbridge have found new life and Tobacco Road in these final five or six minutes should just be content with keeping that ball in the corner as long as they can, especially with the amount of changes we've seen in the past couple minutes defensively and going forward. This is a com almost a completely different team than the one that started and that got the lead in the first place. So these subs really got to work hard and keep that level up because you don't want to see this, this lead being given away. This is a, a game that Tobacco Road 100% deserves to, to leave with three points with. Hashizume, it's a searching ball for, and Cretans has come out of his box and is a judge to have handled it. And on whether or not the referee says that's a yellow card, it would be very harsh on Cretans. It looks like he's just going to give a free kick. Definitely the right call from the referee. Good spot by the lines and Cretans, Cretans left leg just crossed over that line a little bit he knew it dangerous position here though but Chain just didn't do wasn't convincing with how he was handling that Cretans kind of had to come out would have liked to thought he was going to head it away but hesitated a little bit and decided to catch it in the wrong decision in the long run but very dangerous position this tobacco road team just dropped off a little bit in, in intensity and focus in the past five or ten minutes or so partly in, in, in due to injuries but it's months over the free kick the goal scorer from the penalty spot it's his shot. Oh, what a free kick it is. It's 3-2. Absolutely nothing Ryan Cretans could do about that wonder strike from Fortier Munts. And it's just been a classic case of poor game management from Tobacco Road in these final five, final five or ten minutes or so. Having a 3 nothing lead. A, a mistake by Kellen Foster leads to a penalty kick. A mistake by Ryan Cretans leads to a free kick. And, you know, boom, boom. Months with two goals. Give a lot of credit to him as well. He's been clinical tonight. Exceptional free kick. That'll probably go down as one of the PDL goals of the week, at least in contention for it. Very similar to Chompy Mendoza's strike a couple weeks ago against NCFC here at home. But, man, it's just disappointing from a tobacco perspective. And they got to get locked back in because... This is dangerous. They could they can end up leaving this game with one point, and they certainly do not deserve it. And that's an audacious effort from Kisombe. But Ryan Cretans would love to see shots from 40 yards all day long. Love that from the ball girl down there. She can't be any older than eight years old, but great skill. Being the, being the, the home ball girl, you got to waste a little bit of time. She certainly did that there. I love that from her. Might have to give her the man of the match after this, Jamie. Headed on by Al Correa. Del Rosario. Now Moreno. It's a good ball for Diagostino. Here he is, it's a good block in the end. Chain, Mendoza, cuts inside and the referee gives nothing after a soft challenge from Kisombe and now the referee awards a free kick for Lionsbridge. Smart Monks foul. Monks has brought down. Smart foul, sorry to interrupt you, Jamie, from Dylan Chain there. Counter attack was on, puts a little late leg in there, can't blame him for that. Hodge was challenging Desir. And now there's a chance for Lionsbridge, but the flag is up. A relief for the Tobacco Road defenders. Looks like Marshall Hodge had it covered nonetheless, but it's been a heart and throat the last few, few minutes. It's just been 
tough to watch from a tobacco road perspective because they've just given up a lead. Seen them do it a couple times in the season, but not at this level. It's just not really going anything going for them right now. They just look confused and, and not confident anymore, which is really uncharacteristic of how they played tonight. They've been exceptional for 80 minutes. McCartney. Munts. Wonderful challenge from Chain. And D'Agostino is going to go in the book here for almost a nothing that foul. If anything, he passed the ball to the the ball girl. It was a great great pass there to D'Agostino in the long run. Not sure why the referee felt the need for a yellow card there. Hasn't been hesitant to reach in his book tonight, though. It's another long throw in from McCartney. And Devitt was nearly on the end of it. Chain heads away. Then flicked on by Moreno. And be launched back in by Fitch. The danger's not clear yet. Mbamba gets ahead on it. Kisombe. And still lines Bridger pressing. Ashazume. And Moreno is away. He's got Del Rosario with him. Moreno charging on. And it's a poor ball, but Del Rosario has won it. And the referee gives nothing. Maybe went down a bit too easily there, did Del Rosario. And that's an important challenge from Bamba. So he prevented Brennan Burton from lobbing Ryan Cretans. Excellent defending from the experienced man from Manchester. Yeah, Michael Bamber has been exceptional since he's come on. In the past three attacks by Lionsbridge, he's been responsible for all three of those clearances. So can't say enough about it. The Manchester lads stepping in and just getting things done. They needed somebody to step in and just take no nonsense. And this, this referee just not calling much in favor of Tobacco Road recently. A lot of chippy, unnecessary off-the-ball fouls that have just gone unnoticed. And now Mendoza's shorts have been ripped. And again, the linesman not make, being able to make any decisions. These Tobacco Road players must be frustrated for not only not getting any calls on their side, but also letting this Lionsbridge team back into this game and creating this situation. Hodge heads away. Back into the mix towards the Seer. Chain did just enough. We're into added time. It's a frantic finish here at Durham County Memorial Stadium. And Munts has to get this delivery right if Lionsbridge wants to come away here with a point that they probably don't deserve. Punched away by Cretans and in the end, Moreno's clearance goes the opposite direction and he's awarded <laughs> a gift of a corner for Lionsbridge. And yeah, not sure what Moreno was thinking there. He just kicked the ball about 50 yards for a corner. Didn't look like he tried to get it over his head. Poor decision there for Moreno. Munt's delivery, headed away again by a Tobacco Road defender and booted clear by Mendoza. And Rice will have to collect and try and launch another attack for Lionsbridge. Tobacco Road just backing off. Devitt and then Pineda. Oh, he's giving it straight to Kisombe. And it's easy for Cretans to deal with and he'll just hold on to the ball for a few more seconds. Mauricio Pineda got away with one there. Had a chance to oh, clear the ball. Chance for Moreno. It's a good ball to him from Cretans. Moreno still looking for Diagostino. Saved by Rice. And then Diagostino goes down. Maybe a bit too easily from Tommaso Diagostino there. And Tobacco Road will just... Try and hold on to the ball as long as they can. Bamba. That's excellent play from him. Drawing two players before getting rid of it. The chain had no option but to put the ball out of touch. Absolute madness here at Durham County. And that is the final whistle. Tobacco Road hold on. Almost unconvincingly. As they are victorious 3-2 against Linesbridge FC and redemption has been made Chris Wally not happy with the referees and he's got to be careful 
he doesn't say something controversial that gets him sent off after the full-time whistle and he's done well to control his emotions but what's going what's going on in the minds of these tobacco road fc players they had a 3-1 lead and or a 3-0 lead i should say and nearly let lions bridge come back all the way and snatch a point but it's got to be confidence boosting this win yeah, I mean, right now, Tobacco Road players should be should be feeling nothing but relief, Jamie, because, I mean, unfortunately, with those two injuries I at the end of the game to the to um, Kellen Foster and uh, Vincente Gallardo, it made the made the game a little bit different because it forced Tobacco Road to make some changes to a defense that had been so good tonight. So that was a little bit unlucky from their perspective. Give no give some credit to to uh, months really for Lionsbridge because he you know had a PK and a free kick doesn't have to score those finds a way to put them in the back of the net and this game completely changes but Tobacco Road right now got to be feeling some relief but we talked about it before the game Jamie this Tobacco Road team had to respond tonight from that 6-0 defeat and from four losses on the bounce and they did it wasn't as convincing in the last 10 minutes but for 80 minutes Tobacco Road completely dominated this match make no mistakes about that but just unfortunate to see how the game ended like that. A couple of things that were out of control. Thought there was some controversial refereeing decisions, some inconsistent refereeing on both sides. A lot of yellow cards given to some Tobacco Road players that I thought you know, could have been reversed the other way as well. But three points is three points, Jamie. I don't care how you get it, 3 nothing or 3-2. to two. You know, It doesn't really matter. That's three points in the bag, and it's exactly what Tobacco Road needed going forward into the second half of the season. Well, that's all we have for you tonight from Durham County Memorial Stadium. Tobacco Road are victorious. 3-2 over Lions Bridge FC. Oh, and he's finished it off! Gunner!